Jerusalem on a desperate mission. Melech here is captain of the vessel Laro. This small boat carries a most precious cargo. 647 Jewish children. Rachel. The children, they were either orphans or were forcibly and tragically separated from their parents. They range in age from 6 to 14. For the last six months, we've smuggled them out of camps in Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland, and Germany. When we finally got them on Laro and out to sea, well, we thought our problems were over. Where were you taking them? Israel. Eretz, Israel. But the British, the humane protectors for Palestine, discovered us making for Haifa and refused us entry. But why? How could they do that? Their entry quota laws. They're enforcing them. Where else in the Mediterranean could we go but here? These two. It is their courage that has kept the children alive and free these last months. At times, I think, it was only the children's faith that kept us going. You brought each other to safety. Apparently not. Your Excellency, pending the outcome of discussions with the country from which the ship last sailed... Nazi Germany. The Turkish government refuses to grant the children asylum. The Turkish government? What reason do they give? The children have no papers. Hundreds of people come into this country without papers and have stayed. There is one difference. These are Jews without papers. Angelo. The Germans have made an issue with the government. They are demanding that the ship and everyone on it be surrendered so it can be returned to the port from which it sailed illegally. Surely the Turkish government would not agree to these Nazi demands. The foreign ministry has set Friday morning, two days from today, for the ship and the children to be surrendered. Then we must ask the Turkish government to allow the children to stay. No one in the government will see me. Representations have been made by the International Red Cross and to no avail. Tommaso. Please call Foreign Minister Menemengiolo's office. I would like an immediate audience. Immediate, Your Grace. Tommaso, I was born of poor Italian farmers. You came from the land of the Blarney Stone. You, I know, will find the proper words that will make the minister happy to see me immediately. Now. We must organize our few parishes. I'm sure you need additional clothing and food. My sister Maria will give you all we have. Our biggest need is blankets. Our biggest need is asylum. The foreign minister is a man of humanity and honor. I am certain. You've arranged clearances for all my Romanians. Thank you. This is more than I dared hope for. It was not an easy matter. Day after day, I bring you impossible problems, and you solve them so quietly. I do not know what I have done to deserve such friendship. <laughs> well, you are the only foreigner I have ever known who could pronounce my name without the flicker of an eye. Your name? 
I could turn your name into a litany. Uh, that will not be necessary. You've done so much for us. Now I must ask for one more favor. There is nothing I can do. Then you know why I am here. What you want, my friend, is impossible. Just persuade the president to see me. He will not see you. He says you are meddling in our political affairs once again. That is the last thing I would want. President Inono instructs me to read you this statement. In the matter of the ship La Roe and its cargo... It's cargo. Its cargo is children. The ship sails under no recognized flag, has no legal registry. The passengers are without passports or any other acceptable papers. The German government claims the ship was pirated, submits documents that catalog the crimes committed by the fugitives, and demands their return. Under the